The Morning Star engages in a daily battle of ideas against those of the monopoly press. The Star's owners are its readers and their progressive political and trade union organisations, and they expect a quality paper in appearance as well as content. We have a lay elected management committee uh, with a small appointed trade union component with representatives from the Fire Brigade Union, uh, RMT and Unite. The management committee meets once every two months and it is like the board of directors but it, re uh, it obtains its brief from the shareholders to whom it reports every year. The shareholders don't receive a dividend, but they do elect the paper's management committee and influence its political direction. It's not set up to make money, not to make a surplus, not to make a profit, which is the rationale behind most of the other national, regional and local newspapers, who in incidentally are getting more and more concentrated in, in their ownership. Fewer and fewer operators run our media, both at regional local and national level, the Morning Star is much more open. And what we should be looking for today is actually more models like the Morning Star to run our media, whether it's at local or regional or even national level. But there's only one sure way to keep the Morning Star shining brightly, and that is to buy the paper every day and persuade others to do likewise. Hello, right. uh, Morning Star, please. Certainly. Yes, 60 pounds, please. Okay. Cheers, Thank mate. Thank you very much. Thanks. It's become increasingly difficult for small titles to get into the news agents. And with the concentration of ownership in the media, we've also had a what you might call a concentration of distribution. The, the problems with newspaper distribution goes right back to, to Murdoch and Wapping because in response to the, the attempted boycott of, of, of Murdoch titles, he then set up his own distribution network, TNT, which broke the monopoly, or that was actually a plurality, of those doing distribution, um, added to which the um, Royal Mail then stopped doing the mail trains and the mail planes, which also took the, um, the, the minor titles, which go from the Daily Jang to the Morning Star to to private eye. It can be obtained by a news agent as easily as the Sun or the Guardian or the Daily Mail. It's just that that's the way the trade operates, that they apply a different rule to the Morning Star than they do to the rest of the press. There is still a tendency that if a paper doesn't sell you know, for a few, couple of days, then the wholesalers will chop it off. And what we really uh, would appreciate uh, would be giving the Morning Star a, a chance to sell by uh, holding papers in the shops and seeing if there is uh, a market for it. We believe that there is. The fact of the matter is we have proved in many local branches of Tesco, Sainsbury's, Waitrose and so on that once the paper's there, their customers will buy it. Uh, and so that policy is softening. We survive on circulation income and on money raised from advertising and our fundraisers. Uh, who, we've got a network of uh, readers and supporters groups uh, all around the country and um, you know that's what sustains us. But of course it will always be hard for a, uh, for a, um, a smaller publication like the Star uh, if it has to rely on major distribution networks who aren't basically that friendly to what the Star stands for to go distribute it in a proper way. It's obviously why the support groups are a big part of making sure that the paper is stocked and we do, and we do get it distributed and placed in places where people can buy it. Even the Morning Star's printers read it in their spare time, when the presses break down. You can't blame the workers here because, uh, you know, they're doing their very best. But if the machine keeps buggering about, what can they do? And we're on such tight time scale, he's got to get to Manchester by half past ten at the very latest. He's going to be hard put to do it, isn't he? The machine just keeps breaking down. Very frustrating. You know, we've got to be away at seven, not quarter past seven or twenty past seven, but four, you know, seven o'clock at the latest. Here, it, I think it comes now. You know, I see something coming down. 
Without advertising revenue from big business, all the other national dailies would collapse tomorrow. But this is the advertising suite here. Hello, advertising. We don't get any commercial advertising or very little commercial advertising, so the bulk of our advertising comes from the trade union movement when they're celebrating things like Toll Puddle or um, uh, May Day and things like that. We're not slaves to the, to the advertisers really because we haven't got all the big advertisers, they refuse to deal with us, so uh, we have to fight our own way, fight our own corner. But then we're not beholden to any big uh, advertiser, you know. Most of our national newspapers have very little interest in what readers say. Um, and, and basically they see them, their, their publications as delivering readers to advertisers. Um, the Morning Star is not a newspaper that delivers readers to advertisers. Until Ken Livingstone became the Mayor of London, we never got any ad advertising from any uh, state organisation until uh, Ken Livingstone and the Mayor. And needless to say, what's the very first thing that Boris Johnson does is he ends all that when he becomes the Mayor. In July 2008, a fire destroyed the Morning Star's newsroom. Yet still the paper came out the very next day, as usual. Well, the thinking behind the relaunch was, was clear. Um, when we had the fire, which wrecked our equipment, we had to put in new technology, which meant we had to put in new programmes. We had to put in new programmes, which meant we had a, a further set of abilities. We could do more. We could make better use of colour, we could make better use of pictures. We had the Springboard Project, which came in and offered us the chance to produce a brighter and better newspaper. And basically the other part of the thinking is that if we don't build the circulation, we die. We're known worldwide as a daily miracle. We've got no resources, no... Uh, with, uh, the only daily paper without um, the backing of a multinational company. Uh, that invests billions. If you look at the new printing process of The Guardian, for example, it cost over, uh, I think, nearly £30 million to set that up. Well, that kind of uh, resource is not over to the Morning Star. And uh, everybody expected us to stop publishing years ago, but we're still here. The newspaper isn't going away. The cause doesn't go away. The cause of working people is never solved. It just moves on to different levels. We have to adapt to those different levels. Uh, we have a website which is now acknowledged to be one of the best newspaper websites. Whether we can continue that will depend obviously on finance because it doesn't generate money in the same way that, uh, say, a commercial uh, newspaper would do. We're adapting to the 21st century, we're adapting to the problems that working people face and the huge changes in communication. I think it's the only forum on the left for all these different strands of progressive opinion to come together. Uh, to that extent it's unifying in that it provides a platform for an expression of opinion on the left. The editor and the staff have their own views, but it is not sectarian, it does not denounce other people for not being with the editorial line automatically, and I think that's the most important thing to do. We feel that the Morning Star has a, a role in our national political life that is filled by absolutely no other organ, and so it's vitally important to support it, to make sure more people know about it, and so people can find out the truth behind the facade, frankly, which is what normally gets reported by most of the media in Britain yeah. today. The only voice that we've got in the workplace on a day-to-day -day basis of a newspaper is the Morning Star. We don't always agree with the Morning Star's policies and we don't expect the Morning Star to agree with all the RMT's policies. But it's the only vehicle on a daily basis that puts our views up and other people's views about making life better for working men and women. I think that the trade union movement widely supports the Morning Star, probably uh, more than any political party. So as far as I'm concerned, it's a paper that reflects trade unionists' viewpoint to trade unionists. I've been a daily reader of the Star, virtually every day, uh, because when I come back from holiday I, I read the back issues. For the best part of 40 years, that's a very, very long time. Uh, from my earliest days as a teenager until now, uh, through all the vicissitudes of my political life, uh, the Star has been a kind of anchor for me and I've never strayed very far from its uh, political line. It's the only daily paper on the left. It is the repository of 
the best part of a century of uh, political experience, some mistakes, some big mistakes, uh, but learning, I hope, from those mistakes. And definitely there is no one with the kind of experience that the tradition of the Morning Star has. So I hope that the Morning Star will play a central, if not the leading role, in the uh, reassembly of the forces of the left. It's very, very difficult for people on the left to get access to the mainstream media. So in that respect, the Morning Star is incredibly valuable. Um, it's incredibly important that it continues. Um, it's survived for many, many years and it's still surviving today and I personally uh, support it uh, in its drive to become a bigger, broader and more important paper in the future. The Morning Star is one of the finest achievements of the Labour, Socialist and Communist movement in Britain. It's our paper. It's your paper. Buy it, sell it, take a share in its future and use it in the struggle for peace and socialism. The Morning Star ultimately is on the side of people who are fighting to improve their living standards, campaigning for peace, fighting for a better society. The Morning Star is in solidarity with those struggles and so what we need is more solidarity from the people engaged in those struggles with the Morning Star and the best way of showing that is to read the paper and make use of the paper every day. Keep buying the paper, contribute to the paper by that I mean, if you're a campaigning organisation, send your news stories in. Use the letters column to promote ideas and debate. But just keep the paper going and, and increase the democracy within the, uh, the governing body of it so, so that there can be good feedback between readers and, the, uh, and what you might term owners. The only way the newspaper can survive is on the basis of people become shareholders, they have a say, actually own a newspaper uh, for working people. And I would say to any progressive worker, whether they're in employment or unemployed, and can afford some spare cash, is to buy some shares in the Morning Star. If I go around to union conferences and sell the Morning Star, particularly at the TUC, people say, I must get it daily. And thank goodness it is now available in slightly more outlets so that they are able to. But you know, I mean, the Morning Star is not just for a conference. It's, it's, it's like dogs, they're not just for Christmas or a pet, they're for the whole of the year. So, I mean, my, my message, if you buy the Morning Star one day, buy it the rest of the year.